The Lord be with you. You're all very welcome to our service this morning on the fifth Sunday of Easter, particularly if you're listening in from outside the parish. What a fantastic week of weather it has been, and wherever you are and whatever the specific set of circumstances you've encountered, I hope and trust that you have known the love of Christ in your faith at all times. In a moment, we're going to sing our opening song together, Christ, our hope in death and life. But before that, some words of Scripture. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, tells us the following. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Let's sing. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. What is our that our souls to him belong who holds our days within his hand what comes apart from his command and what will keep us to the end the love of christ in which we stand oh sing hallelujah our hope springs eternal His grace and goodness known in our great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith when fears arise, who stands above the stormy trial, who sends the waves that bring us nigh unto the shore, the rock of Christ. Oh, sing Lord Jesus, we uh, confess to you the wrong things we have thought, said and done. We are sorry that we haven't loved you or loved other people. Thank you that you died for us and rose again. Please forgive us and set us free for the glory of your name. Amen. And some words of reassurance of God's forgiveness when we uh, turn to him. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has promised forgiveness to all who repent 
and have true faith in him. Be merciful to us, pardon and set us free from all our sins. Strengthen us in his service and bring us to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter, Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Well, I hope you all enjoyed Victory in Europe Day yesterday, our 
75th anniversary. What a, a wonderful milestone for the nation and indeed for many nations all across the world. Uh, although uh, commemorations, understandably, in the times that we have were somewhat subdued um, because of the lockdown and the coronavirus pandemic and whatnot, there was still plenty to, to do and to celebrate and, and to watch on the TV. Uh, we, uh, we enjoyed tuning in at three o'clock uh, to uh, Winston Churchill's uh, wartime address signalling the end of all hostilities um, uh, with with Germany um, uh, during uh, the, the Second World War. Uh, and as he pointed out, um, there was still hostilities with, with Japan and whatnot um, to, to, to be sorted out. Um, we also enjoyed then tuning into what is becoming a regular occurrence for our own Queen, Queen Elizabeth, um, at uh, nine o'clock. And uh, what a wonderful quote indeed, where she said, the streets of Britain are not empty because they are full of love. And uh, with everything that we are thinking about today in our service and will be in our uh, Bible passage and sermon a little bit later, uh, how apt uh, was that quote indeed. Um, I thought that I would take the opportunity um, to uh, to do a wee bit of research um, and through a few people that uh, I have become aware of and uh, um, through uh, Nigel Henderson at History Hub um, Ulster, um, uh, we have uh, put together um, a little bit of information regarding some of the names that are on uh, the uh, war memorial in, in Derry Lynn Church um, for the uh, Second World War. So um, that, that, that's my intention. And uh, uh, I hope that this is helpful to you. Some of you may, may know all of this. Some of you may know some of it. And uh, for, for some of you listening, it may be new altogether. Well, of the names that are mentioned to do with the uh, Second World War um, uh, in, in this parish, we have Major John Henry George Crichton, uh, the fifth Earl of Erne, who was born on the 22nd of November 1907 to Major Henry William Crichton, DSO, and Lady Mary Cavendish Grosvenor, daughter of Hugh Grosvenor, the first Duke of Westminster. His father was killed in action aged 42, whilst serving with the Royal Horse Guards and is buried in the St. Verde British Cemetery in Belgium. John Henry George Crichton became the fifth Earl of Erne following the death of his grandfather in 1914. Lord Erne married Lady Davidema Catherine Cynthia Mary Millicent Bulwer Lytton, the daughter of Victor Bulwer Lytton, second Earl of Lytton, and Pamela Plowden in uh, 1931. Although Lord Erne had previously served with the North Irish Horse, he received a commission with the Royal Horse Guards at the outbreak of the Second World War. He was attached to the 12th Royal Lancers, the Royal Armoured Corps, when he was killed in action on the 23rd of May 1940, aged 32, and is buried in the Wormhout Communal Cemetery in France. Next on our our list is Lieutenant Anthony Danvers Cavendish Butler, who was a son of Henry Cavendish Butler and Blanche Cavendish Butler of Lisnesky. He received his commission with the North Irish Horse, which was incorporated into the Royal Armoured Corps, but he was attached to three commando when he died on the 14th of July 1943, aged 27, during operations at Agnon and the bridge at Malatai in Sicily. He is buried in the Catania War Cemetery. Next comes leading aircraft man Thomas Herbert Johnson, a son of George Johnson and Annie Elizabeth Johnson of Achillean. He was serving with the Royal Air Force Volunteer Reserve as part of the occupation force when he died 
on the 21st of June 1946, aged 25, and is buried in the Cell War Cemetery at Niedersachsen in Germany. Also uh, on our memorial is the name Monica de Witchfield, who was born in London in 1894 to John George Massey Beresford and Alice Mulholland, the daughter of uh, the first Baron Dunleith of Bally Walter. Monica worked in a soldier's canteen in London, where she met and married Jorgen de Witchfield, uh, a Danish aristocrat and diplomat. And the couple settled at his estate in Engestoft near Maribo in Lowland in the early 1920s, and Monica became uh, a Danish citizen. During the Second World War, Monica resolved to work against the Nazis in association with the Danish, Danish resistance and the British Special Operations Executive. Um, Monica was uh, arrested by the Gestapo early in 1944. She was tried by court martial and uh, condemned to death. Her sentence caused outrage in Denmark, and after a few days, it was uh, commuted to life imprisonment. Monica was transported to a prison at Hotbus near Dresden, and in January 1945, with the Russian army approaching Cottbus, she was taken in a crowded cattle train to Waldheim prison camp. She developed viral pneumonia and died there on the 27th of February. 1945. She is commemorated at uh, Mindelunden, the park in Copenhagen, honouring the dead of the Danish resistance. Our final name on our memorial in uh, in Sterry Lynn. Um, uh, there isn't actually uh, much information that could be located. Possibly others might have uh, some information, but um, uh, History Hub Ulster, uh, they, they couldn't locate a, a bombardier John Wallace Royal Artillery as a, a war fatality and uh, uh, apparently none of the men with that name who died with the Royal Artillery have a recorded connection to County Fermanagh. Now somebody else may have uh, other information refuting that but certainly that's what uh, I have been told at this point. There was a Lance Corporal John Wallace, a son of Mary Ann Wallace of Maguire's Bridge, who was serving with the 1st Battalion Royal and Skilling Fusiliers when he died on the 13th of April 1942, aged 27. And he is commemorated on the Rangoon Memorial in Myanmar. Um, What's, what's now called Myanmar, um, or uh, what used to be known as the country of Burma. I hope uh, this has been of uh, some help to you this morning, folks. And uh, just to conclude this little segment, uh, I was thinking that we uh, could keep uh, a, a minute silence and uh, and then uh, we will move into uh, the rest of our service this morning. Hello boys and girls, 
I hope you're keeping well. The other Sunday school teachers and myself are really, really missing seeing you every Sunday and teaching you in Sunday school. But we hope you're enjoying the lovely weather and getting outside loads and having lots of fun at home. So, Claudia, you've been doing lots of schoolwork so far this week. And one of the tasks, what have you had to do this week that you have to bring into school? Well, we have, we made a picture for the NHS and we're going to put them around this in the Brilliant. Can you show the boys and girls your poster? Lovely. Yeah. Look at all those lovely hearts on that poster. And who else had to do one of those this week? This is mine. Mm -hmm. um, but you know who else had to do one? Jake. Yeah. And what else does Jake have in his? So he was doing it for the NHS. And who else did he do it for? He done it for the postman mm -hmm. and, or ladies. Yeah. And the farmers. Yeah. And they're called key workers. Yeah, and they're really important at the moment too. And he also has got a lovely big green heart. Yes. Can you do a, a, a heart with your hand, Claudia? We were mm -hmm. practicing this earlier. Yeah, that's brilliant. And whose birthday was it this week? Mine. Was it? Yes. And did you get any nice birthday cards? Yes, actually I did. And let me see one of them. <gasps> Look it. That was from us, wasn't it? Yes, that was from Mummy and Daddy. Because we love Claudia so much, we mm -hmm. got our birthday card with a heart on it. There's another heart. Mm -hmm. And there's some hearts down below too. And they're like 3D. And I think this card is a really cool card. Mm -hmm. So the, the shape hearts is a symbol of... What is it a symbol of, Claudia? It's love. Love. So today I'm just going to read you a little bit out of the Bible about what the Bible says about love. So, love is kind and patient, never jealous, boastful, proud or rude. Love isn't selfish or quick-tempered. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs that others do. Love rejoices in the truth, but not in evil. Love is always supportive, loyal, hopeful and trusting. Love never fails. Isn't that amazing? Yes, that's so amazing. Brilliant, Claudia. So what big event happened in the Christian calendar a few weeks ago? Can you remember? It was Easter. It was Easter. And apart from eating Easter eggs, can you remember what the whole Easter story is all about? Can you tell me a wee bit? Well, Jesus was crucified and he died on the cross and rose again. Mm hmm He did. And do you know why God sent him in the first place? Because, um, <laughs> it's because he loved us so much. You and me and all the boys and girls and everybody watching it. And he had to die for our sins. Yes. He, because we he died for our sins. Just mm -hmm. wonderful. Well done, Claudia. That is just amazing. So this week, boys and girls, we want you, whenever you have to do your schoolwork and you don't want to, you understand that, don't you, Claudia? <laughs> or whenever you have to go outside and you don't want to. <laughs> or whenever your big brother or your little brother or your big sister or your little sister is annoying you. Big sister. <laughs> we want you to remember what the Bible said about love to be patient and to be kind and we want you just to remember just how much God loves each and every one of you. Mm. I hope you have a great week and maybe you <laughs> can sing along with the next wee hymn all about God's love for us. Chat to you soon. See ya.
still am a child of his care. For his word teaches me that his love reaches me everywhere. Wide, wide as the ocean, high as the heavens above. Deep, deep as the deepest sea is my Savior's love. child of his care for his word teaches me that his love reaches me everywhere today's reading is taken from first corinthians chapter 13 if i speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love i am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal if i have the gift of the prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and if i have a faith that can move mountains but have not love i am nothing if i give all i possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love i gain nothing love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it does it is not proud it is not rude it is not self-seeking it is not easily angered it keeps no record of wrongings. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but when there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I w was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Andrew. It's uh, it's great to see a man enjoying the sunshine, and uh, well, hopefully he's he's not the only one in the parish. Very relevant words indeed, Andrew. And uh, everybody, we're we're going to turn to them um, in a moment. Uh, once again, can I take the opportunity to welcome you all here? Uh, today, uh, listening to uh, this uh, service of the word uh, with Kenali and Holy Trinity Parish in Derry Lynn. May God uh, bless the words uh, and find them faithful, which I would speak to you in a couple of moments. Let us pray. Lord God, uh, make your word. Uh, our rule, make your spirit our teacher, and may your glory be our supreme concern for the sake of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, uh, in our passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, just read, we notice uh, how much is being said about love and gifts. Joanne and Claudia uh, referred to it earlier on as well, uh, this uh, whole area of love. We'll come to that in a moment. Everybody loves uh, receiving a gift, don't they? I remember uh, when, uh, it's it's quite a while back now, and, and I've, I, I got some good gifts there a couple of weeks ago for my birthday as well, but I remember one particular birthday when I was 10 years old, 10 years old. Now, boys and girls, I don't want you uh, trying to guess how long ago you think that is, but uh, uh, it wasn't today or yesterday. Let's just put it that way. I was 10 years old and uh, looking forward to uh, a birthday gift. Uh, uh, I was now into my second decade and, uh, and, and it required something very, very special. What do you think? Uh, I, I got. Now, bear in mind, this was a number of years ago. 
you got you get you, I don't know if you've guessed or not. But anyway, I got a Bart Simpson t shirt. Yeah. Every man of my generation had a Bart Simpson t shirt, I'm sure. And then when it came to uh, the uh, uh, first non uniform day at school, immediately after my birthday, uh, the principal said to me, he said, uh, you can't be wearing a t-shirt like that at school. Uh, I don't know. It was it was a pretty good t-shirt. But anyway, everybody loves receiving a gift. I'm sure you can think of uh, one or two good ones that you have received yourself, not only for a birthday, but maybe for a, a different occasion. Maybe uh, if, if you're married, maybe for your wedding day or perhaps a, a bonus from uh, your employer. Um, or, or even a, a, a gift uh, that, uh, well, is really yours, you know, you're entitled to it and you've maybe earned it, uh, maybe the milk check or, or, or something of that nature. Um, some gifts uh, we receive will be appreciated more than others. And, and that's always the way, I'm afraid. Uh, and uh, to some extent, that's what uh, the Apostle Paul is writing about. Um, in these first uh, three verses of uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, uh, because he says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, uh, then I am like uh, a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but I have not love, then I am nothing. If I give away all that I have and deliver up my body, even to be burned, but have not love, uh, I, I, I gain nothing. You see, um, gifts uh, can, can, can come in all shapes and sizes. And uh, speaking about uh, spiritual gifts, which is what we are talking about here, and we're really following on, you see, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which is all to do with spiritual gifts, the gifts which God imparts uh, to the believer. And each believer has at least one spiritual gift, whatever uh, that may well be, to, to enable them to uh, serve God in the way in which he would want them uh, to serve him. But... Um, you know, uh, quite often the gifts that we go after are, are, are the ones that are not necessarily um, uh, the best. It's not that there's anything wrong with them in and of themselves, but um, we're, we're being told here that love is, is the big fish. Well, Paul, you see, was uh, picked by the Lord Jesus to bring the gospel message to uh, the Gentiles. And one of the places in which he uh, was to, to bring that was to uh, Corinth, uh, modern day Greece, uh, where the uh, believers, as we can read from the previous chapter, were experiencing some problems. Paul is explaining that if people have gifts, it might seem all that matters, but in fact, all of it is completely worthless without love. Uh, just like the clanging symbol that he mentions would ruin uh, a beautiful piece of music. The context is that many of these church members seem to be aspiring to be the top dog in the church and the possessor of wonderful gifting uh, from God. Gifts such as being able to speak in all kinds of languages and possessing great knowledge and and understanding but in in all of these things the people in question were they were really only worried about themselves individually and and they weren't worried about uh, the church at large me myself and and i syndrome if you like self-obsessed proud and and inconsiderate in a whole lot of ways. Uh, and, and of course, this can be a problem in churches uh, today as well. Uh, churches and, and the people within them, they can 
they, they can all too easily um, uh, focus on being a, a bunch of individuals rather than a, a collective. Um, and, and so uh, acting very, very individualistic rather than acting in community. You see, uh, as individuals, we, we can be terribly selfish and we often want everything for ourselves, which um, if, if, if all there is is ourselves to, 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 to worry about, then to some extent you can get away with that. But um, when you are um, a part of a church, part of any organization really, but particularly the church, um, then uh, you, you, you just can't act like that. People need it uh, to have love uh, as well as gifts, with love needing to be at the core. And, and that means putting others first. Sacrificial love, you could say, unlike uh, what we, we see in verse 3. The day for selfishness, impatience, enviousness, rudeness, and everything else is ceasing. Eternity is looming. Me and my needs to give way to us and, and ours. Otherwise, our church community, just like the gifts of the Corinthians, will ring hollow. Your gifts are um, for each other. Uh, we are to um, complement each other in our church. And, and to that end, we need to be aware of which gifts uh, will build the church community up and, and which are the gifts which are uh, lacking. I was watching uh, a, a movie the other night about Brian Clough. Uh, some people will recognize that name, the former Nottingham Forest manager and uh, this movie was about his ill-fated stint in charge of Leeds United just for 44 days, I think it was. And uh, let's let's just say, uh, as we read verses 4 to, to, to verse 7, um, uh, I'm not saying Brian Clough was a Christian or anything, but as we read about the kind of behaviour uh, that uh, was um, described in these verses, then you could say perhaps Brian Clough exhibited uh, much of that behaviour, uh, regardless of any of his other uh, redeeming features that he may have had. Um, then uh, they, they all kind of rang hollow for a time because he wasn't saying anything with very much love. Now, dare I say it, uh, within a church community, our relationships um, they're not necessarily going to be a, a bed of roses. Uh, so um, here's a good word which uh, you, you may find useful for your arsenal in the, in the days going forward, but the word sorry will need to be used frequently. Um, but as with any uh, set of relationships, it doesn't need to be a, a constant tennis match. Patience will be needed as we uh, work with one another, as we um, live with one another. But love, the greatest gift, it would be fair to say, is uh, something which doesn't often come naturally to any of us. It needs cultivating every single day. You see, as Paul goes on to tell us, love does not insist on getting its own way. It's not resentful or uh, a keeper of wrongs but it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. It's not just a fickle emotion here today and gone tomorrow. Often love is, is presented that way in the newspapers, on the TV and um, on the billboards that we, we pass frequently. But, but that's not what, what love is. It's supposed to be something steady and something willed. Now that's all very well and good. I hear you say out there, you're, you're asking for the impossible. God is asking for the impossible perhaps. Who, who could ever line up to those requirements? No arguing, no resentfulness. To use a, an example to do with marriage, um, 
uh, I was often told growing up um, about uh, uh, an old rector um, and uh, he, he once remarked at a wedding, uh, he, he, he said that the husband and wife who claimed that they never had a row in their lives, at least one of them was a liar. And he was probably right. You see, everybody in the church is a human being and, and to boot, we're, we're, we're all sinners. So we're, we're not going to, to stick to, to any of these uh, um, uh, high standards, if you like, but we're going to fail and we're going to fail often. But the question is, what do we do with that failure and how do we seek uh, to put it right? There will be difficult days and there will be sad days when we let each other down and, and so on and so forth. There will be um, very uh, days in which we learn many things and there will be other days where we just grow stubborn. But God wants to share them all with us as well. Now, the problem with many of the Corinthians appears to be the deluded belief that they had already made it that they had already succeeded in the christian life but more fool them the day anybody thinks that they have become the perfect christian will be the day that you should think again if only people could see what might be up ahead because as we uh, uh, can see from verses 8 to 10 we are dealing with the the temporary the the mortal if you like the gifts, talents and abilities that we all have are, are here today and, and gone tomorrow. They, they don't last, which is why Paul lays it on the line and tells the Corinthians that love is the only thing which survives. Love is the only eternal uh, uh, item out of all of these. Even faith and hope, uh, they, they, they don't last because there is no need of them in heaven. But love will carry on into eternity knowledge and languages and everything else is only in part as it awaits fulfillment in its fullest sense paul is telling the corinthians and we can learn from this ourselves that as good as any spiritual gifts may be one day there is a far better reality in heaven uh, going back to the idea of marriage again well it's often said marriage is till death do you part uh, but love is the constant which lasts uh, even beyond that, where the gift of marriage and anything else in our case and the various gifts in the uh, situation of the Corinthians will all end. As good as your life and, and your blessing from God may be now, better is to come if you are in Christ. There will be no need for gifts in the future because God will be with us for all eternity. And if we are believers who have submitted our lives to the goodness of Jesus Christ in heaven, you will see him face to face. This is a real knowledge for real men and real women. Things will be complete rather than dimness. We will behold the light of Christ. Our childish, immature, self-seeking ways will give way to a clarity unequaled elsewhere the god who made us all in his own image will be fully revealed in his most glorious splendor paul repeats this reality several times to show the corinthians just how wrong they have gotten things despite it all feeling so right through uh, being so short-sighted the corinthian believers were really missing the most important aspect they were missing love in their mad dash to get to the front of the queue. But this isn't supermarket sweep. Because Jesus loves the church. He loves every single believer. And he loves us so much that he willingly died for us. So that those of us who would put God first in our lives, put him as, as our number one aspiration and sacrificially serve one another in love, will one day transcend this world and be with God forever. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's not about me, myself, and I, but about each other. 
What will be your response to Jesus, the Saviour of the world who died and rose again for the forgiveness of your sins? Paul finishes by telling the selfish Corinthians that when it's all said and done, faith, hope and love abide. But as we've heard today, love is indeed the greatest. So where have you got it wrong? Or where are you getting it wrong currently? As an individual. And where are we getting it wrong as a church? There may be many things that we're getting right. But where might we be getting it wrong? Are we examining ourselves? Are we prioritizing the truly important over what is moderately important? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word today. And we thank you that your gift of love is an eternal reality. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who became nothing and died on a cross so that we might be forgiven. And we thank you that he rose again and abides with you eternally until he returns. And we praise you for your gift of salvation and that your people would witness your great love to an unbelieving world. May unity between us overcome division, for we pray all of this through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, it is good for us to pray. It is good for us to trust and it is good for us through our prayers to love others. Your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, has told us to always pray and to not lose heart. And so we pray this morning for the church, the church throughout the whole world, the body of believers. And Lord, we give you thanks uh, for your people. We bring them before you and we pray, Lord, for uh, your, your touch in all of your people's lives. We pray, Lord, for the world and for the nations of the world, for their leaders. We pray, Lord, for sensible and uh, 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 stable leadership at this time. We thank you, Lord, for um, how, uh, on the face of it at least, there seems to be less uh, warfare, less conflict at the moment. Um, but, Lord, uh, we just pray that many of those things would continue out the other side as well of uh, this pandemic. We pray, Lord, for uh, our community uh, this morning. We pray for the community of Derry Lynn and surrounding areas. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for our neighbours, for our families, for our loved ones, for our friends. And Lord, we just pray that 
there would be um, a, a wonderful movement of your spirit in this area, drawing many onto you. We pray, Lord, for people uh, with sickness or people who are uh, concerned for their health at this point in time. Lord, uh, whether that means hospital visits or treatment or or uh, waiting on results um, or caring for uh, another loved one. Lord, we, we pray for your touch and your guidance in people's lives. And we thank you as well, Lord, for all those brothers and sisters who have went on before us in the faith. And Lord, they are sitting uh, before you now in heaven and, uh, and are um, greatly blessed uh, in your presence. We remember those people uh, who uh, lost their lives in the Second World War um, and uh, uh, Lord, particularly for other believers uh, where that is uh, the case. And uh, Lord, once again, we thank you for for people who uh, served us in such a way by serving in uh, the armed forces of whatever description. We thank you for uh, leaders of our nation at that time and for the leaders today. And we pray, Lord, that uh, our uh, Queen and our Prime Minister and our uh, Assembly here in Northern Ireland would, would all listen to you and hear from you. We thank you, Lord, for this um, uh, temporary stay in terms of the abortion regulations being ruled out. Uh, and we pray, Lord, that that will lead on to much better news uh, as well going forward. And uh, we pray that uh, abortion in, uh, in any sense would not be part of the fabric of Northern Ireland uh, going forward. And uh, we, we pray all of that in Jesus Christ's name. We thank you today, Lord, for health. We thank you, Lord, uh, for uh, sunshine. We thank you for family, for your provision in our lives. And uh, Lord, we remember those who are sick and people who have suffered uh, during this uh, crisis. Um, but Lord, we, we thank you for the members of our NHS, particularly within this parish. We bring before you, Lord, uh, all those who are on our hearts at this time. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you that uh, he is the great physician and he is the one in whom true healing uh, in body, spirit and in mind uh, can be found. And we praise you for that in Jesus Christ. So we say together the uh, second of the morning collects. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day, keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will uh, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer. Uh, for this time of uh, coronavirus and uh, the prayer written by the Archbishop of Dublin, Almighty and all loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we pray to you through Christ the Healer for those who suffer from the coronavirus COVID-19 in Ireland and all across the world. We pray too for all who reach out to those who mourn the loss of each and every person who has died as a result of contracting the disease. Give wisdom to policymakers, skill to healthcare professionals and researchers, and comfort to everyone in distress, and a sense of calm to us all in these days of uncertainty and distress. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who showed compassion to the outcast, acceptance to the rejected, and love to those to whom no love was shown. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen Thank you again to all who have listened in or to you who plan to at some point later. As you approach uh, the week ahead, don't forget to remember that the love God has placed into your heart is capable of extraordinary things and extraordinary service to your neighbour and all those whom you meet. As we once again give thanks for people like Mrs Hall who served with the Women's Auxiliary Air Force all over the UK and uh, many others like her during the Second World War, including those who have given their lives doing so. We remember how our Lord Jesus Christ also came to serve and not be served and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let's say the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless. <laughs>